So are home prices in Los Angeles, are they going up or are they going down? Now let's clarify. I don't even know what's gonna happen in the next five minutes, much less what's gonna happen to home prices in the next year. I mean, I have opinions, I have theories, but I don't, I don't know. And if you think other people know, here's other people. It means value of property could drop 30, 40, 50%. House prices are not gonna come down. And I wouldn't be surprised if they go up by as much as 10 or 15%. March 2024, biggest crash is coming. House prices are gonna go up every year for the next five years. So in determining if you're ready to buy a house in Los Angeles, instead of focusing on the market, something that we can't control, let's talk about things we can control. And for starters, you don't need to buy a house and buying a house is not for everyone and that's okay. At the same time, home ownership is not like a God-given entitlement. You can't just go like on vacation 10 times a year, drive a car that's like twice your annual income and then and then complain that you can't buy a house. Home ownership is something that you earn, you sacrifice for it and it's a responsibility. And, and yes, in the short run, renting is a lot cheaper than buying. So if you're not willing to make sacrifices and have a long-term plan, then like, Home ownership may just like not be your thing and that's okay. But now for some practical rules. One, financing. Now, if you're buying uh, cash, well, like easy peasy, but one big step in knowing if you're ready to buy a house is qualifying for a mortgage. Now, lenders will typically allow about 40% of your monthly pre-tax income to go towards a mortgage payment, including property taxes and insurance. So for example, let's say you make like $30,000 a month. Assuming you have no debt, a lender can allow about $12,000 to go towards your mortgage payment, which in this case translates to a purchase price of about $2 million with 20% down. Now keep in mind that any credit debt that you have reduces your qualifying income. So before you buy a house, you wanna pay off as much of your debt as possible and ideally, I mean, all of it. But, but just because you qualify for a $2 million house does not mean that you should buy a $2 million house. Now keep in mind that a lender is qualifying you based on 40% of your pre-tax income, not necessarily your takeaway income. They're not accounting for expenses like health insurance and, and home repairs or, or that you have a stupidly expensive hobby like buying a bunch of shoes. So it's up to you to actually determine what you can reasonably afford. Now, if you ask uh, Dave Ramsey, you should not be spending more than 25% of your monthly after tax income on your mortgage payment and that's on a 15 year mortgage. So while the lender would qualify someone making about $30,000 a month for a purchase of around $2 million with Dave Ramsey, that's more like $800,000. Now, other people say that it should be 28% of your pre-tax income. Others say that all your debt, including your mortgage, should not exceed 35% of your pre-tax income. And if we look at landlords in Los Angeles, they typically require that your monthly pre-tax income be about 2.5 to three times the monthly rent. So as you can see, there's no like clear answer as to how much you should uh, be spending on your mortgage. And I think it really kind of just depends on each person's situation, income, how much money they have saved up, do they have kids, no kids, five kids, crazy shopping addiction, or like no crazy shopping addiction. And by the way, my name is Daniel Rangel, real estate agent in Los Angeles. If I can be of any help, it would be an honor. And for a free consultation on buying or selling, you can find my information in the description below. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit like or subscribe. Now, another thing to consider is down payment. Now in Los Angeles, I personally think no one should be buying a house with less than 10% down and ideally 20% down or more. Specifically, on the west side of Los Angeles where the median price for a single family house is about $2 million and the median price for a condo is about a $1 million. One, if you don't come in with at least 10 to 20% down, you're paying a ridiculous amount of money in interest and other fees. And two, for example, if we take this $2.1 million house and let's say some lender actually allowed, allowed you to put 5% down, your mortgage payment would be close to $17,000 a month. Meanwhile, the house would only rent out for like $7,500 a month. So if you like lose your job or have to relocate and you decide to rent the house out, that's, that's $10,000 out of pocket every month 
to meet the mortgage payment. And look, in the luxury market, very rarely will you get the rent to cover the mortgage even with 20% down. And that's partly because in the short term, renting is cheaper than buying. Long term, you'll regret you didn't buy, but you'll also regret buying a house that you can't afford. So keep in mind that a bigger down payment also means a lower monthly payment. So yes, if you have the down payment 10 to 20% down, this is a sign that you may be ready to buy a house, but you're still not quite in the clear. Another thing to consider are reserves. If all the money you got is going towards down payment and closing costs, you're not ready to buy a house. You should have at least minimum three to six months of living expenses saved up after the transaction closes. One, just in case um, life happens, and two, no matter how many home inspections you do, even if it's new construction, emergency repairs are pretty much a guaranteed cost of home ownership. But anyway, if you have three to six months of reserves, then yes, you may be ready to buy a house, but you're still not in the clear. Another thing to consider are the hidden costs of home ownership, like again, maintenance and repairs. Keep in mind that a basic plumbing call is about $200, a new AC system about $15,000, a new roof minimum around $20,000. And two common expenses that people weirdly completely forget about, the cost to move and the cost to furnish a place. So yes, all that beautiful furniture that you saw, that's staging, it's, it's not yours, you have to get your own um, furniture. And as a sample, here's a throw pillow from West Elm, $62 for one pillow. But even then, even if you have all the money in order, that still doesn't mean that you're ready to buy a house. Now, another thing to consider is the holding period. Real estate is a long-term investment. So if you can't reasonably expect to hold on to the house, be it as a primary residence or a rental for minimum five years, ideally 10 years and super ideally until you die, um, don't buy a house. One, keep in mind that mortgages are front loaded, which means that the majority of the interest is paid during the first few years of the loan, which means the first year that you buy a house, like 85% of your monthly payment is going towards interest. Now, each additional year, more and more goes to actually reducing the principal balance on the loan. Now, also consider that selling a house can cost around 6% of the selling price. So even if prices go up, you still have to cover your selling costs. So the longer you hold, the more likely you'll see prices go up and the more you'll be able to reduce the principal balance on the loan. And as far as home prices going up or, or going down, I say try walking into it with the idea that prices are going down. I mean, if you buy a house and prices go down, will you be okay? Like mentally and, and financially? Are your monthly payments comfortable enough? Is your down payment big enough? Do you have enough financial reserves? Did you plan long-term so that if there is a recession or, or property values do go down, you won't be like completely derailed? And look, yes, ideally prices go up and they go up forever, but it's good business practice to also account for a worst case scenario. And look, if the time is not right for you now, that's that's fine, there's nothing wrong with renting. Just don't buy trying to time the market, buy when the time is right for you. And when that time does come, definitely buy a house. Your 70 year old self will Thank you. See, I find it interesting that if you meet many of the older homeowners in these rich neighborhoods in Los Angeles, many of them, if they had to buy their own house again, wouldn't be able to afford it. Some of them saw their industries disappear. Some of them lost their fame. Some of them lost their money to like Bernie Madoff. But in the end, it was the home that they bought 20 years ago that they were able to fall back on. And by the way, my name is Daniel Rangel, real estate agent in Los Angeles. If I can be of any help, it would be an honor. And for a free consultation on buying or selling, you can find my information in the description below. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit like or subscribe. But either way, thanks a bunch for watching and have an awesome day.